Hello and welcome to our talk on Immersion Cooling Solutions, brought to you by Asperitas and Shell. Both companies work together in partnership to promote immersion cooling and have developed a cooling solution for data centres anywhere. The technology enables the deployment of sustainable, high-density data centres wherever they are needed, regardless of climate. But first of all, let me introduce our two speakers. Firstly, we have Michael Bricious, Business Development Manager at Asperitas. For over 10 years, Michael's focus has been on bringing sustainable and clean tech solutions to the data center industry in startups as well as international innovation projects. He joined Asperitas in 2017 to lead the marketing team in March 2017. Since then, Michael has continued to lead the market development activities as a member of the management team. In his current role as business development manager, his focus is on new business development, strategic partnerships and high impact projects. And secondly, we have Puneeth Shiva Prasad, Product Application Specialist at Shell. Puneeth has attained broad experience in Shell downstream business related to product, product development and technology support. After completing his PhD in civil engineering, he joined Shell in India in 2007. He later completed his postdoctoral research at Clemson University in South Carolina before joining Shell Specialities team in 2013. He's based in Houston, Texas, working as product application specialist for Shell Process Oils, supporting the North America lubricants business. So welcome, Michael and Puneeth. Thanks, Amelia. Let's begin, Thank shall we? Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay. Michael, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, happy to have uh, have this opportunity to talk a little bit more about what we do. So quickly about Asperitas. Um, Asperitas is a clean and high tech company. Um, we have our headquarters in the Netherlands. Um, we have developed a unique immersion cooling concept and several solutions providing to data centers globally. Um, we've made it our mission to have positive impact on the sustainability of data centers and support organizations uh, with their goals to uh, decrease carbon uh, footprints and in increase their energy efficiency, actually. Um, we have received a lot of recognition for our innovative uh, immersion cooling technology and the environmental impact it can have. And we're a proud member of OCP, um, as well as the Sustainable uh, Digital Infrastructure Alliance. Excellent. So, Puneeth, over to you. Tell us a bit more about Shell. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Um, so this is uh, Puneet, and uh, I would like to talk about um, the company Shell. Uh, so basically, it's a multinational company with um, uh, several group of uh, energy and petrochemical companies involved. Um, total uh, workforce in the company is around 83,000 employees, uh, spread around 70 countries. Um, so a company has expertise in exploration, production, refining, um, and also I think in the marketing of uh, uh, products related to oil and natural gas. Plus, uh, they have a vast experience in the manufacturing and marketing of chemicals products as well. Um, apart from this, we have uh, advanced technologies uh, wherein uh, we create innovative approaches to build sustainable energy future. Um, I think that recently there has been a step change in the company related to investments in power, uh, especially uh, involving the low carbon uh, sources such as wind and solar. And also, I think uh, recently there was an announcement on um, biofuels facility in furnace refinery in Netherlands as well, and also with the hydrogen business. So in the end, I think our goal has been is to be power progress together by providing more cleaner energy solutions. Interesting. Thanks for the introduction, guys. Let's move on, shall we? Michael, back over to you, please, if you could explain a little bit more about the immersion requirements qualification. Yeah, sure. I mean, this is, I think, a great way to start this talk, as this is for the open compute community, of course. Um, so we'll share a bit more on the Asperitas immersion cooling technology later on. Um, but we are very proud to, uh, to be able to announce and share uh, for this community that uh, Asperitas immersion cooling tank and the AIC24 um, has recently passed all the immersion cooling requirements um, as are defined by uh, the open compute community as the first uh, solution available on the market to do so actually. Um, so since our participation in OCP, we have contributed to um, 
for example, a specification for an optimized uh, chassis or cassette, as we call it, for immersion cooled server solutions, and contributed to various um, white papers and spef specifications that are also in development now. Um, but this is really a next step for, um, for qualifying an immersion cooling tank um, according to those requirements. Um, for users, there is a lot of value to this qualification, um, and um, especially because they relate to quality, uh, engineering, safety, uh, servicing, and also reliability. Um, and actually, the ASC24 even qualified for the high safety um, requirements. Um, so that's, I think, uh, a great achievement. Um, if you're interested to learn more about uh, what it actually means, um, I believe Emilia will be planning to um, actually launch and uh, release a blog on this topic. That's um, right. So I would like to invite everyone to uh, follow our blog and uh, there will be more on it. And of course, there are various talks within the those Peak Global Summit, of course, that will elaborate on this as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to releasing more on that for sure. Michael. Yeah, sure. So to take a step back, um, because we started with this great announcement, I think, but maybe it's good to set the scene and clarify why immersion cooling is offering a lot of value to data centers going forward. Um, there are various challenges we see in the, uh, for data center operators and users. Um, and you see them here on screen, actually, uh, to start with the first one, because that's the real driver and uh, the urgency, actually, for immersion cooling or advanced cooling uh, in more general perspective uh, today. Um, and those are the high performance requirements in the latest server and semiconductor generations, and as well the ones um, coming out uh, in the next few years, uh, looking at the roadmaps from those OEMs. Um, those specifications are clearly going towards high powered components, uh, high density requirements in the server and in the rack um, and the facility as well. Um, this is challenging on its own, uh, very expensive, and in some cases even impossible to cool with forced air. Um, so that's, that's where advanced cooling and immersion cooling comes in. Um, but if you combine this challenge with uh, the other needs we see as well in the industry, um, related to efficiency, but as well sustainability. And I believe we will talk about that a little bit more actually later on, um, but also decentralization of compute, um, basically the need to bring data centers um, anywhere, also in uh, densely populated and urban areas. Um, I think immersion cooling is going to offer a lot of value for those different use cases and to bring uh, value for um, basically a uh, fit for all of those challenges we see in the industry, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, of course. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about our product. Yeah, so uh, being aware this is a remote talk, right? So uh, some of you never have seen the, the solution. So as you see now on on, uh, on screen, a, a few perspectives is on actually the solution externally and internally. Um, and as well in the larger deployment. Um, so we're talking here about, again, the ASC24, uh, the solution itself, an immersion cooling tank. Um, it's containing a lot of capabilities. Um, each of our solutions is uh, basically um, a contained package of uh, compute, networking, power distribution, and cooling uh, with integrated heat exchangers. Um, and it's very simple to integrate in all kinds of uh, data centers, um, both brownfield upgrades of data centers, but also fully greenfield new developments. Um, it has also been designed for enterprise class data centers, uh, up to tier four ASHRAE standards and, and uh, Time Institute standards, I have to say actually, and has been validated as well by such users. And uh, I, I think later on uh, we can share some of those cases uh, where uh, such users are using immersion cooling um, to meet all of their carbon and energy efficiency goals, right? Excellent. And I'll just show that short video again, just of the inside there. You can see the IT yeah. and the fluids beside there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Yeah, so uh, the core concept uh, within our solution, um, usually we start here, actually. Uh, that's actually the unique element uh, of our all of our products. Um, and that's the way we circulate uh, the fluid, dielectric fluid, uh, inside uh, our tank solution. And we do this with natural convection driven flow. Um, meaning this is a passive system. There are no pumps uh, included uh, and also not required to circulate the dielectric. Um, heat exchanges are integrated, so fully contained, and this is therefore a self-managed concept. It's very reliable, um, efficient, and effective. Um, we can integrate um, up to the most powerful CPUs and GPUs today, 
um, and we have done so. Um, and the beauty of natural convection driven circulation is next to that it's very reliable and um, as well uh, passive, um, is that it allows for warm water cooling in most cases. Um, meaning we can run this without chillers in hot climate zones, um, uh, as with ASHRAE W45. Um, and, but also when heat is in demand or heat utilization or reuse, as some people call it, um, our systems can deliver warm water, uh, for example, to district heating or direct industrial users um, to offer a bit more value from an energy impact point of view. Fantastic. Okay. Moving on to the IT. Yeah, so I think that's naturally that's the next topic, right? When uh, when you apply immersion cooling, um, how do you integrate IT? What can we use? Um, how is it optimal? And this is very important, of course, and uh, and glad we will work together with a wide uh, variety of partners um, on various levels. Also Shell on material compatibility, of course. When it can talk a bit more about that, maybe. Um, but it's good to mention that we uh, work with uh, most leading OEMs and ODMs, uh, validating and optimizing server solutions for immersion. Um, we offer services to certify solutions from the design point of view. Um, also, we offer simulations and performance testing um, in, in our lab. Um, within OCP, we are also uh, looking into uh, material compatibility, as mentioned, with Shell. Um, but we're also sharing a lot of um, uh, data, for example, from the tests related to IT gear uh, with the wider community to make sure that going forward, immersion cooling can really become the standard uh, on scale um, um, and also on hyperscale if we talk about OCP, right? Yeah. Excellent. And let's delve a little deeper. Yeah, so uh, because how does this really uh, work, right? Um, I mentioned that within OCP, we also contributed an open spec for what we call the open cassette. This is an optimized chassis for server solutions. Um, so that allows for optimal flow uh, within immersion cooling systems. Um, so feel free to check out, of course, uh, the, the, the paper on it. Uh, the spec is available for everyone. Um, so this is for us the basis to uh, to validate uh, server solutions and optimize for it actually, um, and in our case it's also optimized for natural flow convection, um, which um, basically um, includes several temperature zones within one of our systems, going from the colder zone on the bottom to the higher temperature zone on uh, the surface of, uh, of the fluid dielectric in the system. Um, when you know that, um, you can also imagine that we look at the layout of components in a server. So that's one of uh, the part of the work we do with uh, the OEMs and the ODMs uh, to make sure that the flow is optimal and uh, all of the components are at the right place in terms of uh, thermal performance. Um, and then what you see here actually uh, centered on this uh, on the slide here is a solution where we turned an OCP uh, spec. Uh, I believe it's the Leopard uh, actually solution that's uh, that's a well-known server solution within the OCP um, domain. Um, we have turned this into an immersion ready system. Um, and that's actually from a layout point of view, quite simple to do so. And right hand you see as well how it performs um, in an immersion solution like ours, uh, both from temperature wise, you can see it's in a very comfortable environment to make sure that all of the components can perform in the best possible way. And on the right side entirely, you see as well the flow within um, something you can't see when you stand in front of our solution. So I think simulations and models are actually the best way of showing uh, what the natural convection is actually uh, capable of. You see that the flow is very efficient uh, with the greener areas, uh, really where the fluid moves faster than the surrounding areas. Um, so basically only the fluid that's really heated up is moving um, and therefore it's very efficient and we create those different temperature zones, uh, which offers those climate benefits I mentioned in the beginning. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for that insight, Michael. And speaking of the fluid, Puneet, could you tell us a bit more about that, please? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is uh, actually um, a slide which talks about uh, shell immersion cooling fluid, S5X. This is actually specifically designed uh, for immersion cooling applications, uh, co-engineering with aspirators. Um, so some of the key attributes or the features of this fluid, uh, which I would like to talk about. Um, first of all, you know, we divide this into three baskets, safety and purity, performance and protection and reliability. So um, I think the first and the foremost concern or the questions that people uh, or the customers ask about is on the uh, purity uh, standpoint for the fluid. So this actually fluid 
uh, uh, has a synthetic uh, base oil, uh, which is actually, which meets the purity requirements for European and US pharmacopoeia. Uh, it is non-halogenated, it is a food grade material, and also it is free of any uh, allergens uh, in, the, in the product. And it also has an extremely low volatility. Uh, the, uh, the reason behind is that uh, this fluid is actually, uh, has a very high initial boiling point. Uh, due to which that you know the volatility will be very very minimal uh, during the application temperatures now with respect to performance uh, this is actually material with uh, excellent thermodynamic properties uh, and uh, I, uh, also um, mentioned before it is non evaporating it is very low density because this is actually produced out of uh, natural gas so it has uh, um, uh, lowest density uh, and uh, also Another key feature here is that we are actually uh, having a very high flash point for S5X. So uh, on one end, you have a lighter product. On the other end, you have a high flash point and also low volatility loss. These are the key performance attributes that we have with the S5X material. With respect to reliability and uh, protection, uh, so this has a, a isoparaffinic in uh, uh, structure uh, material, which is high compositional consistency. Uh, very high oxidation stability as well. Um, since it is actually made of uh, um, natural gas uh, using uh, uh, GTL technology, uh, where you know the, the fluid doesn't have any sulfur, if there is any concerns of uh, corrosion uh, when it is actually uh, inbuilt in the uh, tank setup, it doesn't have any impurities such as nitrogen and aromatics. And also, uh, as I highlighted before, that you know it is also non-corrosive as well. Thanks, Puneeth, for that explanation. And I'll just quickly show the video again so you can see how beautiful it is. <laughs> Let's move on. Puneeth, could you explain a little bit further, please? Yes. So uh, as a company, um, apart from providing uh, immersion cooling fluids uh, for data centers, Shell is also one of the largest independent energy companies and also second largest in uh, North America as um, uh, also, uh, I think one of the key um, uh, strategy that we have built in, in the company uh, lately is about to accelerate the transition of our business to net zero emissions. Um, we also aim to provide more cleaner energy solutions to our customers. Uh, one of the things which we'd like to uh, talk about uh, is uh, that uh, the energy group uh, can uh, actually work with the customers uh, in their decarbonization journey by providing number of solutions such as renewable power, renewable energy uh, certificates, and then power purchase agreements. And also, uh, I think we are also working on the carbon offsets uh, along with the customers as well. Thanks, Puneeth. Michael, back to you. Yeah, so maybe to continue a little bit on that, because I think that's one of the strengths of the, the partnership we have, of course, with Shell as well, um, where we can offer really a lot of impact to data centers, right? Depending on, of course, uh, where what's the scenario, what is the objective. Um, here you see some of the benefits uh, directly from immersion uh, as, we, uh, as we would be able to offer it, um, again, de depending on the scenario and what's the benchmark. But just to mention one on, on PoE energy efficiency, um, practically we can reduce this as low is 1.03 and and we have some cases actually showing this kind of results uh, where we go from uh, a case that has been um, performing on a 1.4 as low as uh, is going to a 1.04 for example so on an energy efficiency level um, we have uh, we can have a great benefit with immersion cooling um, but there are more benefits um, for example for space uh, utilization um, performance of of components as well um, but um, energy reuse, as I mentioned, um, our systems are developed again for warm water cooling, but that means as well we can um, uh, basically bring high temperature and high value um, energy, thermal energy actually, um, to another place from the data center. And there are loads of concepts um, and innovative um, uh, projects actually going on on this topic, especially in Europe. Uh, energy reuse is, I think, really the next step. Uh, for data centers to uh, to work on their decarbonization as well to have more impact. Um, but and one really important one as well that I think is a challenge that came uh, in the last may maybe one or two years actually really on the agenda for data centers on a strategic level and that's 
uh, water consumption, right? Um, so that can be extremely high. Um, uh, using water for a bit more energy efficient uh, cooling infrastructure, but access and availability of water is uh, is also limited, and something that we should um, manage as a, as a very important resource, right? So that's something I want to highlight as well. With immersion cooling, um, we use water, but we don't consume it. So it's a closed loop system. Um, so that makes it very efficient as well on that level. Um, and then I mentioned again, climate independence, um, warm water cooling that offers a lot of options as, as well in warmer climate zones like SRA 45 and more challenging environments, right? Um, so yeah, again, looking back at the previous slide from Puneet on, on the shell surfaces related to energy um, and immersion cooling at the core of what it can offer to data centers, I think it's a very strong proposition to work organizations that have objectives on sustainability and, uh, and energy. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much for that. So let's move on to the project at Shell. Could you explain a bit more about that, Michael? Yeah, so we have seen different types of users utilizing um, immersion cooling uh, to achieve their energy efficiency or carbon footprint objectives. Um, we have seen enterprise users uh, like, uh, like banks, um, but also Shell. Um, as you see here on the slide, without going uh, too much in depth of it, but um, I think it's really good to highlight that as an enterprise user um, for their high performance um, applications, um, actually Shell is, uh, is also a user of our technology in Amsterdam. Um, but we also have seen telco providers or on-premise uh, high performance computing users uh, making, I think, great steps forward in terms of uh, performance and flexibility and sustainability with immersion cooling. Um, so there are various user types that can benefit from this. Um, I would say to learn a bit more about this type of projects and, and use cases and also our collaborations, um, but also our R&D and activities in OSP. Again, I would like to mention again the blog um, we have on aspertas.com. It, it offers a bit more in-depth uh, insight in this kind of activities. Um, so feel free to check that one out. Thank you, Michael. Well, we've come to the end of another uh, very interesting webinar. Um, I'd like to firstly say thank you very much for joining us. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, certainly visit both websites, um, asperitas.com and shell.com slash immersion. And uh, yeah, and please just, you know, uh, thank you very much to Michael and Puneet as well for today. Yeah, thank you as well, Amelia. Okay. Thank you so much, Amelia. Take care and see you next time.